Mistress Raven sent you down here, is she? I suppose you'll be wanting one of my stories, will you? Well, here goes. Here's The Boy in the Park by Callum Pierce. One thing that no human can stand is to go to their grave with an untold story inside them. If you have the right sort of ear, like I does, you can hear them whispering away. Some people walk past graveyards enjoying the silence or the rustling of nocturnal wildlife. I hear the clink of glasses or faint music from parties long since enjoyed. Sometimes the chatter of men in trenches as bullets and bombs fly past them. Ready, men? Or even the screams of those whose lives were cut short at the hands of another. Sometimes people's lives are cut short before they ever get to tell their story. Other times they hold it in all of their lives for fear that no living soul would believe them. I collect those stories from then that's passed on and Mistress Raven lets me tell them to you. You young uns who are brave enough to listen to the tales of the dead. The story I've got to tell you today is perhaps my story as much as anyone else's, as this is what brought me down here to the crypt. I realised it was my job to listen to those tales and pass them on. One dark night, I was tidying up the flowers on my old grand's grave. Her grave was always so beautifully quiet on account she told all of her stories when she was alive. She used to love to sit there with a cup of cocoa and tell me all about the strange and wonderful adventures she had in her many years on this earth. As I was working away, taking out the weeds that had crept around her resting place, I felt a small hand on my shoulder. Jumping up, I turned around to see a young man, probably eight or nine, I could see from the grave that he was standing next to that this little fella had died an old man. But here he was appearing in the body he had when his story happened. He was completely transparent. I could see right through the little fella. Excuse me, mister, he said. Can I tell my story? As soon as I nodded agreement, all of the graves in the old church faded out of view. I was in a dark field and I could hear the faint sound of a swing, swinging away in the distance. I could see the young man walking through the heavy fog toward me, looking much more solid than he had in the graveyard. He was dressed in his school uniform, making his way home on a dark winter's eve. It got dark so quickly in the winter around here. If you'd been kept behind on detention, the walk home would seem like a midnight stroll. I could see that he too had noticed the sound of the swing because he turned and started to make his way to the small children's park behind me. When the clouds moved out of the way of the bright moon, we saw another young lad sitting on the swing, rocking back and forward, forward and back. He was wearing the same uniform as the other one. I figured he must have been on detention too that day. You couldn't give me a push, could you? The boy asked. It's been ever such a long time since anyone pushed me. A young fella from the graveyard walked over and dropped his bag next to the roundabout. And then he approached the one on the swing. My name's Bill. The one on the swing declared. What's yours? Jack. Answered my lad. Go on then, give us a push. Jack got behind the young man and pushed hard. Bill swung his legs and kicked himself higher and higher, with Jack shoving him back the other way each time he returned. When he was as high as he could possibly go without swinging right over the top, he let go of the chains and jumped from the swing, landing giggling on the ground in front. Shall we have a go on the roundabout? He asked. Jack didn't have time to answer before Bill was running towards the old roundabout and jumping on. Jack ran behind him and grabbed the old thing, spinning it round and round before jumping on with him. 
They kept going round until Jack felt dizzy and sick. And then they both staggered off and waited until the world stopped spinning. Come with me, Bill said. I've got something to show you. Bill started walking back towards the road. He was walking so fast that every so often he would disappear in the fog until Jack and me could catch up with him. He stood by a tree next to the road, smiling. These are mine, he said, picking up some toys that sat in a pile at the bottom of the tree. When Jack was standing next to him, he could also see cards and bunches of flowers tucked in amongst the children's toys. Why have you put all them here? Jack asked. I didn't put them here, Bill replied. People leave them here for me. Why would they do that? Jack asked. But I knew the answer straight away. Because this is where I died. Bill was grinning ear to ear. Come with me. He grabbed Jack's hand and pulled him into the road. Jack struggled and pulled, trying to yank his hand back and run back to the grass. But Bill was holding him tight. Stay with me. We can play in the park forever. Bill begged. I'll get so lonely here night after night. Jack could hear a car approaching in the distance, but saw nothing through the thick fog. He wondered if the driver would even be able to see him. He thought about his mum and dad at home waiting for him to return, and this gave him an extra burst of energy. He yanked his hand back from the other boy and ran to the side of the road. Diving onto the grass, he saw car headlights cut through the fog and a vehicle appeared driving straight through his playground companion. When the car had disappeared into the fog again, he watched as his friend faded slowly from view. I just wanted someone to play with, he heard him say as he disappeared. The graves came back around me and the church appeared in the distance. The boy sat down next to his own grave. He told me that from that day forward, every time he'd heard of an accident on that dangerous stretch of road, he imagined that little park filling up with lost boys and girls. He imagined his friend playing happily with them, but he never dared to go back and take a look. He'd never told no one about that night. He was certain that none would believe him. Thanks for letting me tell my story, mister. He mumbled. I can move on now. Raising the little cap he wore, he faded out of sight. That was when I decided to come and start looking after these old crypts. It's my job now to listen to those final stories and let the dead move on unburdened. And then, of course, I passes them on to you lot.